Hi, everybody. Uh, it's so nice to follow Brittany. Isn't she just the most positive and enthusiastic person in our industry? Um, so <clears throat> this is my ninth MozCon. I've been to nine MozCons and two MozCon locals. And uh, MozCon's been such a permanent fixture in our life for the past decade that uh, when my daughter was three, she thought I worked at MozCon. So, you know, in 2012, I got invited to speak as one of the community speakers. This is the first time I've been invited as one of the primary speakers, and so I'm incredibly thrilled to be here and incredibly grateful to Moz for all they've done for me in my career this past uh, decade. Um, and today's extra special because my amazing daughter and wife are somewhere out there in the audience. So, hi, Violet. Okay, let's talk about reviews and uh, the incredible power that reviews have to drive business for your business. Uh, now, reviews are not just for local businesses. Any business can uh, benefit from online reviews, Google reviews. Uh, Moz is a great example. They've got uh, 50 Google reviews, uh, 4.5 rating. These are all unsolicited. They're not asking for them. They just show up automatically. And when someone Googles a brand, that local knowledge panel shows for almost all businesses. This is a global SaaS company. Whitespark is another global SaaS company. Uh, and we actively recruit reviews. So we have 194 Google reviews. And uh, they're all five stars. I think we got a trickle of not so five stars, but it skews to five. And we use these everywhere. They're super valuable for our business. We put them up uh, on our website in like a testimonial section. We uh, direct people to them. Whenever I send a proposal, I'm like, oh, check out our reviews on Google, see what our customers are saying about us. They're super valuable, and uh, they're very visible. They show up uh, all over Google. Whenever someone Googles your brand, and if you're a local business, they show up in the local finder as well. They're super valuable. So uh, Mike Ramsey, he astutely pointed out that these entity panel, so if you're not a local business, you're one of more of these global businesses, you can now claim your entity panel. And so it's not a far stretch to think that a lot of these Google My Business features like Q&A, uh, Google Posts, reviews, will start being added to some of these uh, global businesses. And so the opportunity is there. We can see this coming. It's, it's already there for most businesses, but even some of these more like super global businesses, we can see reviews coming in for them. Um, reviews become more and more important as Google sends less traffic to your website from the local listings. So the local packs, back in the day, they used to send your uh, customers to your website. You click on a local pack result and you'd go to the website. These days, they all go to what's called the local finder. So you click a local pack, goes to the local finder, and the finder is just packed with information. It has your, uh, you know, questions and answers, it has photos, all of your contact info, it's got reviews, um, Google posts. So it's, Google is specifically wanting to keep you in the local results. They don't want to send you to the website anymore. Um, uh, Sundar Pichai at the Google I.O., he specifically stated that search is obsessed about getting users to the answers quickly and giving them what they want. And this really ties in into their move towards voice search. So, they want to be able to have the answer at hand so that they can deliver the results via voice search. And that's why you're getting so much less traffic to the websites. Um, plus, reviews do impact rankings. So uh, in the 2017 Local Search Ranking Factor Survey, um, it was the sort of cluster of factors that had the largest increase. And we're going to see that increase continue to rise uh, as reviews have more and more impact on local rankings. Uh, this slide is, and plus one other, is the only ones I ever talk about rankings because reviews are so much more than rankings. Reviews really drive business. It's a massive conversion factor, and that's where the huge value is. You should definitely do them for the rankings, but also for the conversion factor. And you know, think about it logically. When you're searching for a business and you see a result like this, which one are you going to click? Even though they rank number three in the local pack, that's the one you're going to be drawn to. But this opportunity is not going to be there forever. Um, what, think about like two, three, five years from now when everybody has 100 reviews and they're all five star. It doesn't become a differentiating factor anymore. 
Right now is the time that you can capitalize on this differentiating factor of reviews. And so you should really take the time and uh, work on your review strategy. I want to tell you this great story about Eager Beaver Moving. Uh, this is the moving company that moved us uh, about four years ago. And then we started talking about SEO. And so when we first started working with them uh, in 2015, they had four Google reviews and a 4.2 rating. Um, so we got working with them on a review strategy, you know, uh, did a whole bunch of things for them. At that time, they were getting about 20 leads uh, per month from Google. Um, and so now, after working on all that review strategy stuff with them, they, get, uh, they have 81 Google reviews and a 4.8 rating. But the reviews themselves are so valuable. They've actually, the reviews have become this business's sales team. If you think about sales processes and uh, objection handling, all of their objections are handled by the reviews before the customers ever pick up the phone to call Eager Beaver. You know, they, the reviews say things like everything was professional and the guys were friendly and easy to work with. They put down mats so they wouldn't uh, mark up the floors. They stayed in constant contact uh, with us. The price was fair and I could use my visa. Like all of these questions that customers might have in their head, they answer them by reading the reviews. And so they become convinced that this is the company for them. You know, our move with Eager Beaver was without question the best we've ever had. And so it's amazing uh, what it's done for them. Now, I asked him just recently, how many leads do you think you're getting from Google? He says, uh, I got about 10 to 15 per day. So that works out to like 350 leads per month from Google. That's a 1,600% increase in the leads he gets from Google. And I asked him to send me a photo, but he didn't. So I decided I'm going to use this one, which I think represents how he feels about his reviews. All right, let's talk about how you can get more reviews. There's lots of tips and tactics for doing this, but the number one tip and tactic is simply that. Ask every customer. If you just do that, like if you just get up and walk out right now, that is enough for you to have a massive impact on your review acquisition. It's just doing the ask. And you talk to lots of agencies, it's like pulling teeth trying to get their clients to ask for reviews. But it's so valuable, it's the one thing, it's, it's enough. And if there was a, a rule that's even better, it's always follow up. And so you send the initial one and you always send the follow up. You do those two things, you're 80% of the way there, but I got more for you than just that. Um, you're gonna need a link to your Google listing. Back in the day when it was Google Plus and prior to that it was Google Places, there was a direct URL that referenced your business on Google. They don't have that anymore, so it's now like if you do a search for your business with address, you're gonna get what's called the local, the local or the knowledge panel, and in the knowledge panel has a right review button. So uh, we have a quick little free tool that you can use to just type in your business and it'll, it'll generate a link for you and shorten it that you can then send to your customers. So that's a, a free little tool. And then once you have that link, now you can just send it to everybody in many different ways uh, one way would be the back of your business card. So the front is your contact info. On the back, uh, it would be like, please check out our reviews and we'd love one from you as well. Here's a link. Um, if it was a retail type thing, you could drop a card in the, in the um, bag with the receipt that would just say, you know, please review us. If it was, you know, let's say auto dealer or a mortgage broker, with their like, closing of the sale package, you include a little card that encourages reviews. Uh, this, Pizza Place has it on the bottom of their receipts, which is a smart way for restaurants. Just stick it on the receipt. Uh, you can put in your email signature. Hey, check out our reviews, and we'd love one from you as well. That's a smart place to put it there, especially if you've already emailed them in the past and they never followed through for it. Every time you have contact with them, it's still there to kind of remind them that you'd really love that review. Um, automated emails. This one's pretty amazing because uh, this, is, this is an email that I get from my hair salon, and I was getting this automated email from them, and I told my, my stylist, hey, you should add this little thing where you ask for a review right in that automated email. So he started doing that two years ago. He went from like 20 reviews, now he was 147. They did that one thing. It's all they had to do was just throw it into this automated email with the short link, so I generated the short link for him, and that has really driven their reviews. And this 147 in our city of a, about a million people, compared to every other hair salon, they have like 10, 20, 30. He's got like far and away the most in the entire city just from doing that one little thing. So it can have a huge impact. Uh, newsletters, if you send out a monthly, weekly newsletter, you can uh, highlight one of your customer's reviews. So 
Roxana can feel good that her, her review got featured. And then when other people see other people reviewing, it tends to breed more of that positivity, and they might be inclined to leave a review as well. Um, you can put up a sign in your office and waiting room. So uh, I always think about this because, you know, a couple years ago I left a review for my dentist while I was sitting in the waiting room, and I always thought, like, you just have a sign there that just says, hey, please leave us a review. And if you have that sign, uh, it can really, people are just sitting around doing nothing anyway, so it really uh, reminds them that that stuff is valuable. Um, you can put a sign on the door, you know, like a, the, kind of like the people love us on Yelp stickers, that kind of thing. You can make a little sign like that. Uh, ask for reviews on social media. Hey, we'd really appreciate a review. This small thanks with Google thing, I don't know if you've ever checked this out. I feel a bit embarrassed as a local search practitioner that uh, I always heard about it when it came out. It's been around for a while. But I never actually logged in and tried it until recently, until I was preparing for this. It's amazing. They generate all of this awesome stuff for you. Google wants you to encourage reviews. And they have all these awesome resources. They'll make posters for you, like that poster uh, that I showed here, that's from Small Thanks on Google. They make these beautifully designed posters and table tents and all kinds of things, and they're just ready, they're already print ready. They're PDFs, and you can just print them off. And so uh, Small Thanks with Google is a really smart way to generate these kind of review encouraging materials. Uh, of course, you can put a page on your website that has links to the various sites that you'd like to get reviews on. And then once you have that page, you can link to that page from all the other different parts of your site, like maybe a little thing on the sidebar of your blog, or in your header, in your footer, that kind of thing. It's good to feature some of your best reviews on these pages as well. Um, and then, of course, there's software that can help you with acquisition, especially in a high-volume business. If, you're, if you just don't have the time for your, your uh, salespeople to make that uh, personal ask, you have a high volume of people coming through, or your company is so big and diverse, software is really helpful for that. Uh, there's lots of them out there. There's Get Five Stars. We have one called Reputation Builder. And it can automate the monitoring for reviews, the uh, loading up of your customer list, and then throttling through them. So it can really help um, automate the process for you. So uh, there's software systems. Um, and then another thing is that software systems can collect direct feedback rather than only online reviews. And so that direct feedback is really great because when you get a direct, you can use it and mark it up in uh, schema markup, which then you can put on your website and uh, it will get these stars in the search results. Those stars are really great to drive more eyeballs and attention to your particular organic listings uh, in addition. So it's like taking that review and getting organic benefit from them as well. So um, it's too complicated to go into it. Uh, you can't mark up your Google reviews. You can only mark up direct feedback, so this is an important tip. And all the details and tips on how you would do that is in this blog post here. So if you just go to bit.ly, whitespark-schema, that blog post uh, has everything you need to know about what the code is supposed to look like and uh, the specific rules around it. Um, and then another thing for high volume businesses, uh, let's say you're a restaurant, it's kind of awkward to deliver the receipt uh, or the bill and be like, oh, and can I please get your email address so I can send you a, a review ask email. So in many businesses, it doesn't make sense to do like a personal ask, but these digital loyalty programs are amazing for that. So <clears throat> when you have, uh, you know, come this many times and you earn points and that kind of stuff, all these people register with their email address. So this is a great way for businesses to collect email addresses. Um, keywords in the review, this is the next ranking thing that I talk about, because keywords in your reviews will impact your rankings, and it makes a lot of sense. If you think about, uh, you know, let's say a particular restaurant keeps getting mentioned uh, for best steak or something, when people are, it's, it's all in their reviews, when Google sees that data coming in, they can use that to help influence rankings for like best tank steak in Seattle. And so this is a rising factor in the local search ranking factors. In uh, the 2017 study, it was the number 26 pack ranking factor, and uh, it was the number 17 competitive difference maker. So it was the, one of these factors that really sets you apart from your competition. Um, <clears throat> so the way you can do that, so like a basic email would just be like, hey, we really appreciated working with you, and we would love a review online. Here's a link. That's your sort of basic review ask. To step it up a notch, you can add a little blurb in there to help direct what they could talk about. You know, it's like wondering what to write about. What service did we have completed for you? And so if people are mentioning the service, 
That's the keyword. You're getting that keyword in the review. So just sort of prompting them, giving a little bit of guidance is a, is a tip for how you can get some of those keywords into your reviews. Um, now, there are some, those are the sort of do's of reviews. There are some don'ts of reviews and uh, some things that you should not do. What, one of the big ones that gets people is offering gift cards or running a contest. Like, so if you leave us a review, we'll give you a discount or a gift card. That's explicitly against Google's guidelines, and you can get penalized for that, so you definitely don't want to do it. This is a great example that happened last February. It was a law firm that posted to their Facebook group, and they said, um, you know, anyone that leaves us a review will get entered into a contest. They had like 120 reviews. They all kind of came in during the process of the, the con contest. And uh, a competitor reported them on the Google My Business forum, and they got all those reviews wiped out. So incentives are not OK. You're not allowed to do them, and you can definitely get your reviews wiped out if you do do it. Um, but there's a, a smarter way to incentivize, and that's to incentivize the employees, not the customers. So I've seen businesses really drastically improve their reviews by running internal contests. So either like different stores will compete, and with the store that has the most Reviews will that month will win some kind of pizza party or something, or you can do it at the employee level. The employee that gets the most reviews, uh, he gets a hundred dollar gift card. That's a, an example of how you can incentivize the employees, not the customers. And then not only that, it has a side benefit because when you incentivize the employees, they're now also incentivized to provide extra good customer service. They're thinking about this. They know they're going to ask for the review. They know it's going to be public. And so they really spend extra time thinking about it. So it has that, it's like a win-win. You're getting more reviews and you're kind of getting your, your employees thinking more about customer service. You can't review your own business. Uh, that's just the thing. It's, you're not allowed to do it. It's part of the guidelines and it makes sense. Google wants uh, businesses to be reviewed by their customers. You can't ask for reviews in bulk. So if you have a mailing list of 10,000, which is now probably 400 after GDPR. If you send uh, out to your entire list and then all those reviews come in at one time, that's something that's uh, against Google's guidelines. Don't get too many reviews from the same IP. So I've seen businesses, they'll set up like a kiosk or they have a, a tablet where you log into your Google account right on that same device and leave the review. They just kind of pass it around to their customers. That's a bad idea because then all those reviews will be tagged with the same IP, same device signature, and those will get removed, so don't do that. Um, and there's this new thing that came out in April. It's called review gating. It's a brand new updated guideline. Google says you cannot selectively solicit positive reviews for customers. Selectively means this. So if you ask the question, you know, how do we do, and then some people say, oh, you were great, and some people say, oh, I wasn't so great, what you do to actually funnel people one way or the other. So anyone that had a good experience, you send them to the review sites. Anyone that had a bad experience, you send them to the how can we improve form. That's called review gating. And Google, it used to be a big thing that all the software companies did. Our software did it too. Uh, it's now not allowed. Google has specifically said, don't do this anymore. And so all the, the software companies have kind of shifted gears, and they've updated all their software. So all that's, that's cool. But just if you're doing it individually, you can't do it anymore. So it's not all just about Google. It's valuable to diversify your review strategy. And you want to get reviews on more sites because when someone does a branded search for you, there's all these extra sites that will show up uh, in the organic results that people can learn about your business. So you want to have a positive presence on all of them. And we see this interesting dichotomy all the time where you've got 188 Google reviews, 4.9 rating, and then a lower, um, I think it's a, uh, this one, you have a lower rating on Yelp. Oh, I took that slide up. But all of these sites, and so the way that you find the sites that you should be getting reviews on is you can do a branded search, and you can see, well, what are the sites that come up for my brand? Those are clearly sites that I want to make sure I'm getting reviews on. Um, you can do a keyword search as well. And so a keyword search will show you the sites that are important in your industry and city. And so those are the other sites that you want to get reviews on as well. And then. Once you have them, you just want to cycle them through. So if you've got these cards made that you're dropping into bags, just have you know, one card says Facebook, one card has Google, that kind of thing. So you want to cycle through them in your review asks, in your emails, that kind of thing. Yelp. All right, so Yelp is a big, uh, big thing. It's pretty much the worst. Everyone hates Yelp. Um, so one of the reasons it's the worst is because you're not allowed to ask for reviews. You can't, uh, they have this, asinine policy where they don't let you ask for reviews. 
Uh, so that makes it difficult for business owners who want to improve their presence. And not only that, it's like the people that are reviewing on Yelp seem like the grumpiest curmudgeons. Whereas you know, this, this is an awesome series. If you've ever seen this uh, Jimmy Fallon and Aziz Ansari uh, reading Yelp reviews, it's, it's pretty uh, uh, ex exemplary of what Yelp is like. And so Yelp sucks. Uh, but it is super important, super valuable. It's very prominent in the search results. So, you know, if you this is the slide I was talking about earlier. If, you know, you've got lots of Google reviews, but then Yelp, oh, you're sucking on Yelp. And that actually looks bad for your brand. So it is worth it to spend some time on Yelp. Um, and it's also prominent in keyword searches. A lot of people will use that. They'll actually go like, to the best hair salons. Oh, 10 best hair salons. I want to re read that article. And so they'll go to Yelp, and they'll actually find businesses through that. So it's valuable. It's important. I got two ways for you on how you can improve your presence on Yelp. Uh, one is called a check-in offer. So this is so awesome. Yelp uh, offers this thing called a check-in offer. In the Yelp business dashboard, you can uh, create a check-in offer, which is for people that check in on their mobile phones using the Yelp app. Um, so it's just like a discount or whatever. Um, and then anyone that has checked in, the next time they log into Yelp, Yelp does the review asking for you. You don't even have to ask. Yelp will do it for you. So, haha, -ha, joke's on you, Yelp. Uh, next thing is find friends on Yelp. So this is a smart way that you can kind of segment people. Because of Yelp's very aggressive review filter, if someone leaves a review that doesn't have any activity on Yelp, so they just create an account, they leave a review, and then they never use the site again, that review will get filtered. It won't actually show up on your listing. So what you can do is, if you're trying to find the people to encourage to see your listing on Yelp, then you can uh, first search for their email in that little box, which is great. But even better, you can connect your whole email list to a brand new account. So make a new Google account or a new Yahoo Mail account, upload your contact list to it, and then Yelp will just show you everything and show you which people are active on Yelp. So people that have lots of reviews, lots of photos, that kind of thing, those are people their the reviews will stick. And so those people, after you've identified them, you can shoot them an email and be like, hey, did you know we're on Yelp? You can ask, but you could just say something like that and send them uh, a little detail. Um, so I'm going to leave you with this four-step process. I've talked to a lot of businesses, and like when I see these businesses have a ton of reviews, I often just pick up the phone and ask them what they're doing. Um, and invariably, they all have some variation of this exact four-step process. And it works like this. Number one, you ask in person. You look them in the eye and be like, hey, you know, it's been great working with you. Would you be willing to leave us a review on Google? Most times, people are going to be like, oh, yeah, sure. And then you hand them a card to make it easy with them. It's got the short link to the review site. OK, thank you. Here's, here's a card. It'd make, you can just go to that URL and leave me a review. You also send a follow-up email that same day. And you'd be like, hey, it was great working with you. Here's a, here's a link to our Google listing. We'd really appreciate your review. And then, as I mentioned earlier, the follow-up is the kicker. You send that follow-up um, a week later if you haven't gotten the review yet. And that four-step process will drive you more reviews than uh, any, any automated software or anything else you can do. And uh, then you'll be feeling like, uh, like John from Eager Beaver Moving, getting so much extra business because of all of those awesome reviews. And that's, uh, that's it. Thank you.